topic, you're going to have three different groups of, of people listening. You're going to have three people in your audience. You're going to have those who believe that there are apostles. You're going to have those who believe that there are no apostles. And then you're going to have in the third group, those who just don't know. In a recent video about Gino Jennings, who calls himself an apostle, and I say that he's not an apostle, what you get back and just look at the comment section on that video or go peruse YouTube and look at anyone who has anything to say about uh, apostles and say that there are no apostles, especially about Gino Jennings, watch and see how his followers, his devotees, how they come after you. Uh, kind of insulting little group, but that's fine. You get people calling you all sorts of names that you're of the devil or you're not saved, you don't believe in God, all these different things. And then even people who will say, well, why not debate him? Well, let me say this about debating, and I have no problem whatsoever debating him at all. Can I debate everybody that I disagree with? No. Can I call everybody that I disagree with? No, I cannot. Does Gino or any of your favorite neighborhood apostles, do they call everyone they disagree with or they criticize? Do they try to debate everyone they, they criticize? No, they do not. That would be impractical. But if someone is wanting me to debate him, you know, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go ahead and put the offer out and let's see what happens. But I can promise you, if it comes through going through the scriptures, we're going to see some things. As a matter of fact, I want you to share this with, with Brother Gino. Kaya tas adokin tus main apolastus, tus de prophetas, tus de iangulistas, tus de poemenas, kai de daskalos. The words were on the screen. You heard how I said it. See if someone can get that to him or any of your neighborhood apostles who feel like they are with power from the Holy Spirit. They're led by the Holy Spirit. Ask them what that means and to execute that and tell us, tell you all what that means. Now, I'm going to come back to that passage later. What that was was a Greek passage that many are bringing up. And we'll see if it says what some of you are saying. Well, I don't speak Greek. I don't speak Hebrew. I speak English. And so that's what I want. Well, if you are, as you say, that your apostle is led by the Holy Spirit, and since the Holy Spirit sovereignly gave us these New Testament writings in Greek, then it shouldn't be that hard or that difficult for him to understand that and to tell us what it means. And as I said, it's not going to sway everyone. And it's not meant to. As I said again, this is just meant to kind of affirm those who believe that there are no apostles. And for those who are kind of not sure, this should settle the argument for you. In a technical sense, anybody can be an apostle. It's not a special term in and of itself. All apostle simply means is uh, a messenger or someone who's sent. As a matter of fact, Jesus was called an apostle in Hebrews, also in John, and other places the Bible says that he was sent. And so in the generic sense, the word just simply means a messenger or someone who's sent by someone else. And so you've got two different groups of apostles that are out there. You have those that are in the generic sense that are sent by someone for a certain purpose who are apostles. You've got people like James, you've got people like Barnabas who are apostles. The issue is what type of apostle are they? James nor Barnabas or any others are considered to be of the same ilk of the, of the 12 apostles plus Paul. They're not in the same category as being in the office of an apostle. And so when we look at what the qualifications are for the one in the office of the apostle, first and foremost, they had to have seen the resurrected Christ. They had to be eyewitnesses to the resurrection. Not that they saw him resurrected from the dead. They didn't, no one saw that, but they saw him afterwards. Now, in truth, there were over 500 people who could have at least fit that part of the criteria because even Paul said there were even, there were over 500 people who have seen Jesus after his resurrection. So you had to have been part of that. According to Acts 1, according to Acts 22, according to 1 Corinthians 9, you see that one of the first descriptions is that this, this, these apostles had to have seen the risen Christ. So that makes it clear off the bat that unless you're over 2,000 years old, you missed the qualification by a few thousand years. Second, an apostle had to be specifically sent by Jesus, handpicked and sent by Jesus. We know we have the original 12, then minus Judas, who the Bible prophesied that, that was going to happen. And so you see his replacement being Matthias. And so what was the qualification for Matthias even to join? We already said that he had to have seen the or witnessed the risen Christ. And so they choose 
two and then they end up letting God be the final determiner of the, the last one. And so you've got these 12 hand-picked apostles. Oh, by the way, Matthias also having spent some time with Jesus. And so the one thing that you're going to find with the 12 as well as with Paul is that they didn't just jump out there. There was some time in ministry, some time with Jesus to kind of learn of him and learn the gospel. We, we read about how long it took for Paul to actually start out into ministry. And so whether, whether you would say that's a qualification or not, um, I won't harp on it too much when someone says that's not technically a qualification of someone. However, you won't find Jesus picking disciples, picking apostles who were not first discipled by him. And so the third thing, because you're gonna have some folks who are gonna say, well, I saw Jesus, he came to me in a dream. There's no way to argue that you can't, <laughs> you can't say that because now anyone can say that. So you're gonna have folks who are gonna say, well, Jesus handpicked me. Jesus, I saw Jesus and he handpicked me. Fine, here's the third one. All of the apostles were empowered with miraculous signs, all of them. All of them came with some sort of apostolic power when it came to healing, when it came to all these different things. Now, were there some people who also performed some of these miracles? There were. Were they called apostles? They were not. All of these, everyone who performed a miracle or who had any sort of signs was either an apostle or under one of the apostles' apostolic authority. You also notice that all of the scriptures are written by apostles, save Luke and James, who were under apostolic authority. What was the whole purpose of even having at first these 12 disciples, these 12 apostles, to be the foundation of the church? And we're going to look at this passage in a second, but what was the reason for that? Remember, God did not want a divided church. And so you start off with these 12, and of course the Bible says that the gospel comes first to the Jews first, then to the Gentiles. Because just like today, you've got a lot of prejudice and different hatred towards different groups. Similarly today, you had back then, the Jews didn't like the Samaritans or the Gentiles, and they didn't like the, uh, and the Samaritans didn't like the Jews or the Gentiles. The Gentiles didn't like either, and that's kind of how it was. And so God starts with the Jews, and then on the day of Pentecost, you've got these 12 people, not 120, these 12 people who receive the Holy Spirit, and then what happens from them, from their hands, you see the church grow. The Jews receive the Holy Spirit first, they become part of the church. Then who gets it next? According to Jesus, how we said, then the Samaritans. He said to them in Acts 1, you shall be my witnesses when you receive power in Jerusalem, Judea, that's the Jews, Samaria, the Samaritans, and to the rest of the world, that's the Gentiles. And you see it happening just that way throughout Acts. And so because you've got the Jews being the foundation, these, these Jewish apostles being the foundation, We'll talk about Paul in a second. When they start seeing the Holy Spirit poured out on other people and these apostles being the ones that give validity to the Samaritans in Acts 8, you see these Jews, these apostles being the ones that give validity to uh, the Gentiles receiving the Holy Spirit. The Jews couldn't say, yeah, everyone's a Christian, but only us Jews have the Holy Spirit. They couldn't say that. And so now you've got these apostles who are sharing the gospel that's their whole point jesus handpicks them to share the gospel why does he give them power he gives them power to demonstrate to unbelievers or to those who might want to be coming in that they really are sent by god and so who are they apostles to each one of these apostles are apostles to jews or to samaritans well what about the gentiles well that's where paul comes in Paul defends his apostleship in 1 Corinthians 9. So let's go there real quick. In verse 1 of 9, Paul says, Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. So Paul is laying out his defense. And again, one of the criteria he brings up, he has seen the risen Christ. He has seen Jesus. We all know he was handpicked by Jesus, and that's verified by, by others throughout the Bible. Even Peter equates Paul's writings as Scripture. And then he's speaking to these Gentiles, are you not my workmanship? Are you not a result of what I am to you? And so Paul is proving that I am an apostle. And so Paul has been sent as an apostle 
from Jesus. He was sent by Jesus specifically to the Gentiles. Now we see Paul going out on these missionary trips with who? Barnabas. And what is Barnabas called? Barnabas is also called an apostle, but is he of the same sort of apostle? No, Barnabas was not sent by Jesus. Barnabas was sent by the church. So he's an apostle in the, in the, in the generic sense that he was sent, but he was sent by whom? Not Jesus, but by the church for what? For the same reason. And so he's not of that same office. We don't see any books written by him. We don't see any authoritative power. We don't see him classified in this same sense as the others. The same holds true for James. Now, someone will say, well, so what? It's just a title. Well, the title matters, but I would also say this. If someone has a problem with us wrangling over this issue of the title, the question would be then, why would someone call themselves an apostle if all it is is just a title? Well, let's just be clear. And I've been in ministry for, for some time now, and I've always noticed men wanting to be something. It's just like in every, every aspect of our life. People want to be something special. And Paul tells us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But you've got people who want to claim that they're something special, something great, and give themselves a title, apostle or bishop or prophet or what have you. Okay, well, fine. Do the things that an apostle do. Let's see your power. Let's see your work. Because if all you're doing is pastoring a church, well then, be a pastor. Other than talking, what other power have these so-called apostles ever shown? Not much more than the average pastor out there. They may talk big and talk tough and talk boldly and so forth. And let's just be clear. When someone says that this apostle speaks boldly and powerfully, he's not the only person doing that. There are many men out there who are doing the same thing. Uh, maybe to a different audience. And so let's also be clear, talking tough and talking bold and talking loud and proud does not make you an apostle. It doesn't make you anything just loud, proud, and bold. That's it. All the other apostles suffered, but doubtless any of these apostles are willing to suffer anything. As a matter of fact, oftentimes these apostles are willing to do anything but suffer. They were trying to, trying to uh, pull in as much money as they can in their coffers so they can live as high off the hog as they possibly can. Maybe not all, but Kind of hard to find one that didn't. Now, someone will say, well, all that you're saying is fine, but the Bible still does not say that Paul was the last apostle. Give me a scripture. Well, again, what I've given you before, and you've seen the scriptures below, if you don't meet all three criteria, and the first criteria is that you have seen the risen Savior, how could you have? But let's just make it even clearer. Let's go ahead and go to the passage that you all keep wanting to go to and say, that there must be, uh, according to this fivefold ministry, still prophets, still apostles, if there still are pastors. In Ephesians 4.11, we read this. And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. So someone's going to say two things. One, if he gave apostles and you're saying there are no longer any apostles and no longer any prophets, well, then there must not be any pastors. And then folks will say, well, this, this is part of the, what they call the fivefold ministry. And then the last thing they'll say is, where in this passage does he say he's not giving any more apostles? Okay. The passage that I read earlier, Kai Altus Adokin Tus Main Apostolus, you need to understand what that says in the Greek. The word for he gave, by the way, the English is, is clear. The word gave that's used in here is the past tense of give or given, right? So gave is what someone did. He gave, and as Paul is writing this, he gave some to be apostles. He gave some apostles. The word edokin is the aorist tense of didomi, which means to give. So he gave in the past tense, not that he's giving. I know where you're going to go with this in a second, but let me just say this. He is speaking past tense that he gave apostles and he gave a pro and gave prophets. First of all, let's talk about what prophets are cause, so we can get this straight. At the founding of the church, you've got these 12 apostles who are sent to set up and to establish this, this body. And they are speaking to, at least for the 12, they're speaking to uh, Jews and Samaritans. And then you've got Paul, who is witnessing and establishing these churches to the Gentiles. 
But what about these prophets? Well, he's not talking about the Old Testament prophecy, and he's speaking kind of in a chronological sense in order. First, you've got the apostles, which is why he says that they are the foundation, and then Jesus being the chief cornerstone. They are the foundation. And I don't care what sort of building you have, there's only one foundation. And I've heard some little clever little remarks. Well, your house isn't the first house there, and so there's been many foundations. No, there's only been one foundation on this house. You don't build a foundation on top of another foundation on top of another foundation. That's how that works. You build a foundation first and you start building on top of this. And in this case, there's only one foundation for the body of Christ, for the church. Then after that, because there are no Bibles, because they're not manuscripts for everyone here, how are these people going to hear the gospel? How are they going to understand these things? And so these prophets, these guys who are going to give these revelations, they're going to go and also preach. Okay? That's their job. Their job is to give a revelation. That's what the word prophetes means, is someone who's going, who brings about a revelation. So you've got these people in these parts who don't have handwritten uh, manuscripts to read off of. There are, especially like they did even for the Old Testament manuscripts. So now, this is what he gave past tense. And now the latter part where it says he also gave evangelists and pastors and teachers, and this is what folks are going to say, see, that's the fivefold ministry. Well, again, just a basic understanding of Greek will clear that up. There's not five offices here. So if you're saying there's a five-fold ministry, it's because you don't know Greek, you don't know the scriptures. Evangelist is the third term given, but what they would think is the fourth and fifth term, pastor and teachers, no. Pastor and teacher is together. It's what they are, pastor, teacher. That's the fourth office. So someone will say then, okay, well, fine. There's only, it's a fourfold ministry. But if there are no apostles, then that must mean that there are no more preachers. Well, if that were the only passage relating to uh, pastors, teachers, and evangelists, then we'd be fine. However, if we read later in books that were written after, that Paul had written after Ephesians, we'll find this. We'll find that God allows for anyone who wishes to become a pastor, teacher, so that was still left open. You'll find him asking us, really even commanding us, to go and to evangelize. So you're going to have those two things that are still going on. You still, you still see the promotion of those two offices there. You're going to have people that are working in the office of an evangelist. That's still alive. That's fine. That's someone that, that literally goes around and is evangelizing people, we call them missionaries, all throughout the world. You're going to still have people who are pastor teachers. Paul says if anyone desires this. Is there ever a passage that asks if anyone desires to be an apostle or prophet? No. There's no come sign up for this role. There is none of that. And so to be one of those, God has to choose you and God has to appoint you. Did he appoint some pastors and some evangelists? He did. Is he also asking folks to come and sign up or to, to volunteer to become pastors and evangelists? He does. Is he asking for anyone to become or who wants to volunteer to become apostles or prophets, he does not. And so that office is clearly closed. And so anyone who wants to become an apostle prophet, you, that office has been foreclosed to you because you have not been there at the founding of the church. That's all it is. If someone wants to continue to say that he's been sent because the Bible has sent him in a generic sense, fine. Then I guess that means that we all are apostles. But what you won't see is you don't see anyone else in the, in the office of an apostle likened to Paul or the other 12. You do see the other smaller sent apostles, that, those that were sent by the church, you see them, but they don't have the same status as a Paul, as a Peter, as a John. You do not see that. And so since the Greek makes it clear that it was the past tense that he gave them, he gave them in the past tense, meaning that he's not giving them further, he's not giving them any more uh, when, he, when he spoke about it, uh, when he spoke about what he's going to give in Mark, he was looking future tense, but he had already given those in Ephesians. There are no more apostles to be given. But there are pastors who, Paul says, if anyone desires this, he desires a good thing. And he even lays out the, the, the qualifications of a pastor, of a presbyter. And so if this person hadn't seen the risen uh, Savior, if this person hasn't been handpicked, if this person isn't empowered by miracles. I'm not saying that this person has the miraculous ability to speak. There are a lot of non-Christians who are gifted in speaking. We're talking about actual, as we would say, show enough powers that even the people who were unbelievers noticed it and saw this. And so none of these folks like the, 
like the, the Geno Jennings of the world or the Apostle Murrays of the world or even the, the great Apostle uh, Paula White. And so none of these apostles, these great apostles out there have been empowered with these miracles. Yeah! No, not Geno Jennings. The Lord says it is done. The Lord says it is done. For I hear victory, victory, victory. No, not Paula White, the great apostle Paula White. He's going to give you devils. Buy your trouble. I'm going to send you. No, not Apostle Murray. I'm causing it to be activated in your life. Even as it comes on your tongue and you speak it by faith. Not Apostle Eckhart. I declare the spirit of fear to get out. I deliver you, I free you. Not Apostle Catherine Crick. A false prophet is someone who do not turn people to God. Right? What site, what biblical site you say that's what the Bible shows? It's in the Bible. All right, where? You gotta read it. Uh, I can't give you all the scriptures right now. You don't know the scriptures? <clears throat> I do know them, but I can't give you pointing verse. I gotta go through the concordance and show you where they are. Yeah, and certainly not this apostle, this great apostle who, who doesn't even know the scriptures in his uh, legal deposition. So it should be clear that there are no apostles. What should also be clear is that if someone says that there are no apostles, what shouldn't happen is that guy's of the devil. Uh, he's not saved. He's this, he's that. Order. Okay, well, fine. Let's just use the scriptures. I don't mind that. And I, I really don't mind the name calling. Don't mind it at all. And so if you feel like that you need to challenge, this is what you do. Let me know when you're ready to go live and we'll have a conversation. Let's see where you stand on the, on the issues. When we have the live discussions and we're talking about apostles or we're talking about tongues or once they've always saved or, or the Trinity, let's see if your thoughts or your apostles' thoughts hold up against the scriptures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go not just what we see on the surface, but we're going to go into the Greek. Some of you all know I love to do that. We're going to go into the Hebrew and let's just see because that's what he sovereignly gave it to us as. And let's just see if everything lines up. Again, there are no apostles. Not one of those in the thumbnail are apostles. Not anyone walking around here calling themselves apostles. And here's something interesting. I just happen to notice this, but doesn't it seem like all too often most of these apostles happen to be black or surrounded by black folks in the church, whether here in America or in Africa or what have you? Not to make this into a race issue, but what's going on, uh, uh, black folks? What, what, what are we doing here? We need to be, not whether we're white or black, more discerning of who we allow tell us certain things. And when a man makes a statement that I didn't study as though that's a badge of honor, run away from that. Run away from that. When the Bible tells us that these leaders ought to study, when Paul is admonishing Timothy to study, to be approved, to be able to divide, rightly divide the, the, uh, uh, the word of God, does it mean he has to go to seminary? Or No, it doesn't. But it does mean he, have to, he has to study theology. That just means the study of God. He has to study all the different doctrines. He has to be familiar with those things. He has to be able to break it down. He needs to know. If he's going to be a leader, he needs to be able to know the Hebrew. Absolutely. He needs to be able to know the Greek. Absolutely. Why? Because there are certain passages that just aren't as clear in the English as they are in the Greek or Hebrew. So any debate that anyone wants to have, I'm fine with that. But what I'm going to say and want to stand on this is that there are no apostles. If you disagree, you disagree. I disagree with those who say that there are. I am satisfied with Paul being the last. I'm certainly not satisfied with anyone saying any of these other named so-called apostles are on par with Paul or John or Peter. I'm just not comfortable with that. You're not. You don't have the authority that they've been given. You don't have the power that they've been given. You cannot speak on behalf of God, which means you could also, in theory, give us scriptures, give us new revelations. You don't have that ability whatsoever. So just be comfortable that you are a man to preach the gospel. Do that. Be satisfied with that. The titles you don't need. And remember this, when they called themselves an apostle, they didn't call themselves they didn't wear that as a badge of honor. They wore it as, I'm a servant. I am someone being sent by. I am someone who's been sent by someone. I'm not the, the man in charge. I'm not the special person. The special person, the guy in charge, sent me. I'm his emissary. 
And so what we've got today is we've got folks who use that in a, in a backwards way as though this is some high title to have. There's only one high title. There's only one star of the show. And guess what? You so-called apostles, you ain't it. 